Welcome back to Reason for Truth. I'm your host, Stephen Garofalo. Listen, fighting the world, fighting your own battles means conformity with the world. My late dear brother in Christ and great friend, Todd Greenwood, uh, many of you listening may know him or heard me speak about him before. He went to be with the Lord in 2007. And he used to say to me all the time, listen, Garofalo, you always fight the world. You know, fighting against the ways of the world is necessary for the Christian. And that in life, it's it's not always easy, and it gets even harder when we compromise, believe it or not, we make it harder on ourselves when we compromise on the principles of God within this context. Life includes fighting an effort to keep on doing the right things, acting the right way, and thinking the right things according to the Word of God. But listen, in reality, living life includes times of struggle, disappointment, defeat, and triumph. Too many people have come to expect corporate America— Maybe their parents, certainly the government, for sure, to fight their battles because they have not learned or perhaps forgotten that life is not just about leisure and pleasure. We need to keep God as a foremost authority in life and keep leisure and pleasure in its proper context. If we fail to do that, we're going to continue to suffer at the hands of human authority until we trust in God to fight our battles, and not according to our ways, but His ways and His leading. Today I'm going to show you through today's truth text, which is 1 Samuel chapter 8, that the desire of God's people to be ruled by other human beings, namely human governments or governmental bodies, that could actually be corporate in some cases, most of the time government, official government bodies, listen, they're who are all too happy to do that, uh, we'll fight all of our battles if we ask them for, but at the cost of what? Our freedom. Listen, God created us to be free, to freely accept or reject Him. We can freely follow or not follow Him and His ways. In our human nature, though, listen, we end up enslaving ourselves in the pursuit of freedom from responsibility in light of seeking some kind of perceived freedom of pleasure. And today I'm going to show you some parallels between the Israelites' demand for Samuel, right, to put in a human leader, like all the other nations, a king, to lead them according to human wisdom, at the expense of rejecting God as that position, and uh, listen, to live in a world led by God. You see, the cost of freely accepting or rejecting God to guide us, as the Israelites did, and fight our battles always comes with a cost. 1 Samuel 8.20 tells us this, says, but the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel, and they said, no explanation. And by the way, they're rejecting God as your king in that statement. But And then it goes on to say, but there shall be a king over us that we also may be like all the nations, and that our king may judge us and go out before us and fight our battles. That's what it says literally, 1 Samuel eight nineteen to 20. What's amazing is, The Israelites, being chosen by God, want to be like everybody else. How often do we see that? See that in peer pressure. See that in kids a lot, understandably. We have to learn to be leaders as young people and as older people. That's exactly what God did. Man, he granted the Israelites their request in verse 22, as he does for us in the 21st century. And then what happens? We have consequences if it's not rightly done, right? Welcome to Reason for Truth, where the truth comes first. Listen, the reasons come last, but where you know we're always and constantly learning, because when we stop learning, we stop teaching, or certainly we stop teaching well. Today's truth is that too many people have become dependent on the world and don't depend on God, but really worldly corporate and governmental leaders to overcare for them. That's a word, overcare. As a result, listen, we fail to rely on God to fight our fights. This seems to be a convenient compromise over that the difficult work of fighting for principle, right? This you find us in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 8. Here we find the Israelites failing to trust God as their king, and instead demanding Samuel to appoint a human leader or king to fight their battles. Today I want to look at 1 Samuel chapter 8 regarding the single point that God's people ought not adopt the carnal desire for a human king, although we are going to have one here in terms of government, to rule us as opposed to God being above all things, which is what is really behind the U.S. Constitution and the U.S. Supreme Court that's governing them as well as them governing us. See, above those appointed government leaders when this is done, We as God's people, when we fail to do so, we fail to trust God to protect us and provide for us rightly. And instead we get humans making us dependent 
on providing for us unrightly. It's important to note, by the way, that God always provides and protects his own until we depart from his ways, his word and his wisdom in the name of personal freedom. And this is illustrated in the case of the Israelites as seen in 1 Samuel chapter 8, where we find the Israelites looking for human leadership on the battlefield instead of recognizing and trusting that God himself will lead them to a battle victory, just as he did for them in Exodus 15.3. Remember in Exodus 15, 3, it says this, God says, the Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Verse 7 goes on to say, in the greatness of your majesty, you overthrow your adversaries. You send out your fury. It consumes them like stubble. You see, the Israelites fail to trust in God for their provision and fight their battles versus, uh, you see that in verse 24. But as the Bible tells us, it says, And the people grumbled against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? Moving on to verse 26, not trusting in God for their substance, right? And it says in verse 26, The Lord made for them a statue and a rule. And there he tested them, saying, If you will diligently listen to the voice of the Lord your God and do that which is right in your eyes and give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases on you that I put on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord your healer. Exodus fifteen twenty six. See, when we put our trust in God, he provides all our needs. Talk about a healer, coronavirus. We're depending way too much on mankind to the point that you could see everyone suffering. But listen, God protects us. In order to get the big picture in the proper context, let's look more closely at 1 Samuel chapter 8. And by the way, let me put a little caveat in there. I'm not saying nobody's going to die. I'm saying putting your trust in God is going to be according to his will and his ways. And he eventually works things out. Sometimes people suffer. Sometimes people do die. People are suffering and dying now, and they're following all the rules that seem to be in place. But different story. But let's go back to chapter 8, uh, 1 Samuel. It says, Samuel became old, and he made his sons judges over Israel. See that in Samuel 8, 1. This tells us a couple things, mainly that the time of this writing, that uh, 1 Samuel, certainly chapter 8, that Samuel was in his later years in life. He was an elderly man. He was reigning as king, he was judge, and he was spiritual leader over Israel. As such, listen, and as such, a massive void was kind of just lingering overhead regarding Israel's impending departure of Samuel as their leader. Now, verse 3 tells us, Yet his sons did not walk in his ways, but turned aside after gain. The fact that both of Samuel's sons, by the way, rejected God and failed to seek the Lord leads me to believe that, listen, two out of two, I understand. But I wonder if Samuel led Israel, but failed to lead his family, certainly his sons, in a more godly path. We're going to talk about that in an upcoming uh, episode. And that's the focus. Uh, so you want to make sure you tune in and Matter of fact, make sure that you subscribe and hit that alert button, and you won't miss that. Okay, looking at today's lesson, we see Israel heading towards a major leadership crisis, and that when an individual person, family, community, state, or country rejects God as their guiding authority in light of themselves, just as Israel had done so, listen, God judges them by taking his hand of blessing and protection off them leaving them to fight for their own battles and eventually be devoured by the world. The Israelites' rejection of God as king in light of wanting a human king to fight their battles came with real consequences. You see, Samuel's sons, Joel and Abijah, were given privileged jobs as really government and religious judge. See, we, we, we call this nepotism. The role of judge was not only a legal one, but also a religious or kind of a spiritual one. And uh, you can see that uh, verse 3 tells us that Samuel's sons did, it says this, did not walk in the ways of God, but turned aside for personal gain. They took bribes and perverted justice. Pretty strong words. Sounds like 2020 to me. As you stated in verse 3, though, as a result, their ungodly self-centered desire and abuse of power led, I believe, to Israel's rejection of God as king in the first place. Listen, verse 4 says that this, Then all the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah and said to him, Behold, you are old, and your sons do not walk in your ways. Now point for us a king to judge us like all the nations. 
1 Samuel 8, 4 to 5. You have to wonder, they were afraid that Samuel's sons were going to be put in place. That's a, that's a real good situation, you know, that's a really good hypothesis. You have to wonder, they were like, man, give us somebody, just don't give us your sons. They're corrupt, they're corrupt with bribery. But anyways, goes back to a little bit of what happened to Samuel's sons, again, for a later date. Here is the problem for speaking for today. When we think we don't need God because we can do it on our own, listen, we fail to allow God to go before us and fight our fights, instead putting God behind us and taking the lead. We don't want to do that on our own because when we demand that other sinful human beings, sinful like we're sinful, when we depend on other sinful human beings to fight our fights outside of the authority of God and his word, and this includes our governmental body, to provide everything we need and want in life and more, he more often than not grants us that freedom. If we push on God to do that, uh, you know, listen, on our own, take control, he's going to leave us to our own devices. When the Israelites rejected God as their king, this took place in light of Samuel's impending retirement, right? I'm afraid it's where much of the world is at today. Uh, listen, this is not a political issue. It's a spiritual one. It's a biblical one. Read the scriptures for yourself. This has little, if anything, to do with the virus or quarantining. It has everything to do with the principle of trusting in God. Go again, read the scriptures for yourself. You're going to see for yourself, listen, you're free to do that. As followers in Jesus Christ, we're called to obey, listen, human government. We are, but not depend on them for all our essentials and comforts in life. Many people in the United States certainly speak about freedom in very distorted ways, such as freedom to choose to abort their baby and express themselves through burning down cities, other people's property, whatever. Is that really freedom? According to LiveScience.com, freedom is defined this way. Freedom is the power or right to act, speak or think as one wants without hindrance or restraint, and the absence of a despotic government. Freedom of expression includes freedom of speech, of the press, association, of assembly, and petition. Freedom as it relates to Christianity, on the other hand, means to be liberated from enslavement to sin. Most of us know that Christians are free to follow God or reject him through our obedience to God, which leads to goodness. Listen, an eternal salvation. It's a choice. Thus, freedom is exercised on behalf of justice, integrity, equality, and other forms of righteousness. When we put the biblical God, Yahweh, above all things in our life, even before ourselves, for many people, freedom means to live with no responsibility of income through honest work, prolonged. For others, it's freedom to do what they want with their bodies, again, to the point of abortion, to others, it's just a freedom to do whatever they want. Listen, it's a right because they've been suppressed in some way. Listen, God's not going to see it that way. It, it Life is short here. Eternity's forever. And I think we have to be careful, especially if those are listening. If you're a believer, you disagree with this, go to the scriptures and look for yourself. Listen, the word freedom can mean a lot of things when it's applied wrongfully or differently for different people groups for different times and different desired outcomes. Read more about that in my book, Right for You But Not for Me, A Response to Moral Relativism. Dr. Norma Geiser wrote the forward under that. You can get that at equippedresources.com. Listen, all this that I'm talking about, this whole freedom being misinterpreted or, mis or abused, this is made evident. You saw that in World War II, the Germans and the Jews. It's no different for then than it is today, right? Or today than it was back in the day of World War II. In 1 Samuel 8, 7, 8, God told Samuel this. They have rejected me, speaking of the error the elders of Israel made in failing to recognize God as their true king. You see that in 12.12. Uh, 12. As a result, Israel suffered greatly under the oppressive King Saul for many, many years. And listen, when you and I, and we as a country or culture, forget to rely first and foremost on God as king, we end up just like the Israelites did in 1 Samuel 8. We end up with an oppressive, self-serving, governing king, it, government leaders that oppress freedom and lead people to worship, you know, their authority as opposed to the authority of God. Looking back at 1 Samuel chapter 8, the Israelites demanded a human king to fight their battles. You ever heard that? When I was a kid, my mom used to say, you got to learn to fight your own battles. Man, I heard her say that a thousand times, and she was right. Because if you don't, you're going to get stepped on unrightfully. 
By the same token, we have to make sure that we fight rightly and according to the ways of God. And that's certainly not with violence. So let's remember that God always provides and protects his own until we depart from his ways, his words, his word and wisdom in the name of personal freedom. Listen, I pray that you're going to meditate on that, pray on that truth, and pray that God would reach down and uh, really help us change and that we would seek that change. Make sure you do be a few things as well. Don't only meditate and pray on that truth, but also share this. Share this with the younger generation. Maybe it's short enough they'll hopefully listen to it. Share it as well with those of the older generation and in the middle generation for everybody. Listen, we're called to fight our own battles under the authority of God and reliance on Jesus Christ. And I hope you're going to do that starting when? Today. Appreciate you tuning in today. Listen, if you're listening on podcasts, please give us five stars on iTunes. Be very helpful and make sure you subscribe. But if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you like this, tell your friends about us. But after that, make sure you subscribe and hit that little alert button down there. You're not going to miss any of them, all right? That's right. Yeah, smash that little alert button down there. That'll let you know new episodes out. We're not for profit. We do a lot of work here on air. We also do a lot of work off air, things that are not seen, but that's okay. That's what God's called us to. Sometimes you get completely taken off track of what you had planned for that day because God calls you to interact in a human's life. A lot of that goes on. A lot of that is unseen. Most of that you're not going to see at all. And heading into 2021, we have a number of projects we're trying to roll out, and we need your support to do that. You can do that, by the way, at reasonfortruth.org or reasonfortruth.bible, and there's a backslash donate button, or just hit the button at the top right. Listen, Reason for Truth, again, is a registered 501c3. Any gifts, listen, or tax deductible, we'll send you a letter on that. I'll see you guys for the next Reason for Truth episode. Listen, I'm your host, Stephen Garofalo, and this is your Reason for Truth for today.